Hey, my name is Forrest, welcome back. My absolute favorite tool that we all take for granted is the undo redo function. Control Z, Control Y. It's everywhere. Text editors, IDEs, editing software, browsers. But how does it work? Well, it's like a mini version control system. It stores previous states of your work, allowing you to access past versions. And we all take it for granted because it just works. Except when you accidentally control Z in Windows File Explorer, now your data is gone forever. It just works. It works this well because of the data structure used to keep track of these changes and manage your operations on said data. Let's say we wanted to store store this data in an array, a basic data structure where we store elements in contiguous memory locations. First, we would create an array to hold each state of our work. When a change is made, we would add a new state to the array. And to undo, we would simply retrieve the last state. Simple, right? But the redo function is a bit more complex with arrays. We'd have to do something like introduce another array, let's call it redo array, which we'll call in our redo function. And instead of discarding our pop state, we will add that state to our redo array. Array. Then we will make a redo function to pop the last state of the redo array and push it back onto the history array, effectively performing the redo function by redoing the last undone action. Oh yeah, and in add state, you'll want to clear the redo array when a new state is added to the history array because any new action invalidates the future state stored in it. And while this mirrors how most applications implement the undo redo function, traditional arrays aren't the most efficient because they're a fixed size. However, in JavaScript, arrays are dynamically resizable which means that this would be the perfect choice for this. But let's pretend that's not the case. Let's pretend that we're writing this in Java with a fixed size array. And also let's pretend that I forgot that Java has an array list, which is, you guessed it, dynamically resizable. Man, these programming languages really acting as a crush for actually understanding how these things work, huh? I should probably just go ahead and write everything in C. Oh, oh God, uh, maybe not C. You know what, let's run away from that C code and back in JavaScript. And you may ask, why not Python like in my three types of algorithms video? I don't know, I like to switch things up a bit at times and I've been using TypeScript a lot lately. And apparently, Python is terrible in some use cases. Don't get your panties in a bunch, which many of you may have done since that's kind of what we titled our recent issue of their DevNotes newsletter, but that wasn't our opinion. We titled it that because principal software engineer Yoss Visser, who has a little bit of experience in this space, argues while Python is popular and easy to learn, it's quote, patently unsuitable for large professional software applications. I'll link to our write-up summarizing his viewpoints in the video description, which also links to his full article in case you wanted to read more. It's an incredibly interesting read. I recommend it. It's just one of the many stories we aggregate and summarize into the DevNotes newsletter. Feel free to sign up, devnotesdaily.com. It's free. You can unsubscribe at any time, but I don't think you'll want to. I think you'll really enjoy it. Let's try a linked list where, unlike arrays, consists of nodes, each containing data in reference to the next node. This is just a basic linked list structure, which I've had to create myself since JavaScript has no built-in linked list, but it'll get the point across. To add a state, we simply add a new node to the beginning of our list. For the undo function, we remove the first node and return its data. But again, instead of discarding, we have to keep that node in case we decide to redo. And while a bit more intuitive, we'll be similar to what we just did with our arrays. We'll create another linked list to store the states removed by undo, let's call it redo list, then adjust the undo function to move the state from the history list to the redo list and create the redo function to do the opposite. This approach leverages the linked list dynamic data manipulation, minimizing the performance performance issues of the arrays. Pretty good, but still not optimal due to each node in the linked list requiring additional storage for the pointers. This creates the potential for higher memory overhead per element. Now let's implement that hash table, one of my favorites. They store data in key value pairs, so fast access times. First, we'll set up a basic hash table structure. We'll add each state to the hash table with a unique ID. And now this undo function is a little bit different. Because we have unique IDs, we'll decrement the current ID to access the previous state. So then we just increase the current ID to access the undone state, right? Well, no. Just like in our other examples, we have to store it in another data structure, but not a hash table since they don't maintain the order of operations, which is kind of one of the most important things in undo redo functions. I mean, just imagine hitting control Y to redo something and it just chooses a random version of your work each time. That would make me wanna... <laughs> So instead of a hash table, what about a queue woo, woo This is what the JavaScript code for a queue looks like, but there's something about it that feels familiar because a queue in JavaScript is just an array with push and shift operations. And I could show you in Java or Python where DQ is used instead, or even C again to really drill things home. But you know what? Let's not even bother. Queues are first in, first out. Anyway, not exactly how an undo redo function works, but one would say we're on the right track. A track. 
wait a second, why don't we just use a stack? It's last in first out and an undo redo function is last in first out. We only add or remove items from the top of the stack. Why, why didn't y'all think a stack sooner and let me know? It's like you're not even paying attention. Huh, maybe I'm not paying attention either. That array I previously made, well, that is quite literally the implementation of a stack in JavaScript. Like queues, a stack is just an array, but with push and pop operations instead of push and shift operations. But that's not always the case with stacks. Like in Python, a stack can be used with an array, aka a list in Python, when looking for simplicity and clarity. But you can also use a DQ for more flexibility and efficiency. A DQ, which by the way, I'm not gonna call a deck. I just don't like that. A DQ is effectively a Q and a stack combined. I mean, not actually, not really, but kind of. A, a, it's just that it can do last in, first out, and first in, first out. Anyway, back to stacks as a whole. So even if you undo five times, because stacks are last in, first out, the most recent undone state will be the first to go back on the top of the history stack. Then redo again and again, and you're back to where you were before. There's no overhead of managing indices or node pointers. It's efficient, it's taught, and that's why data structures you use matter a lot. Again, I'm Forrest. Let me actually give y'all a little cheers. I'll see you in the next one.